Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Today I'm going to do an unboxing. We got a little Chanel moment. 2023, we are unboxing Chanel. Yes, has anything changed in all these years? No, it's always, <laughs> we never learn from our mistakes, do we? Or do we? Hmm. Is there leather in here? I said I'm not gonna be buying any more Chanel leather. Well, let's see. There might be leather in here, but is it that type of leather? Oh, there's a lot to touch base on. First, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Push the join button next to the subscription button. Become a member today and get access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Deco, all spelled together there as well for extra perks. Thank you to my members and patrons who already pledged. Don't forget to push the notifications bell as well and thumb up this video while you're at it. Okay, let's get to the unboxing of leather. Oh, one more thing. Uh, you're going to see in several of my videos coming up soon, my homage to Vivian Westwood. I am wearing Vivian Westwood today. Uh, she's one of my favorite designers and she unfortunately passed away end of 2022. So to honor her, I am wearing several of her manifesto pieces like this one, do it yourself manifesto with her own handwritten and then printed uh handwriting manifesto active resistance.co.uk so not sponsored by the way these are all pieces that i bought throughout the years uh and i am just homaging her remembering her and you guys should check out vivian westwood she is amazing so vivian this one's for you thank you so much for everything you've done it's hard for me to talk i start crying over and over again you know i shot a movie with vivian westwood called art lovers unite um Hopefully it's going to get distribution soon everywhere, but it's had its world premiere in Melbourne at the Melbourne Documentary Film Festival. Then it went to have its European premiere in Barcelona at the Dart Documentary Film Festival. So, I mean, it's it's doing great. Uh, and I'm just so, so happy to have had the opportunity to get to work with this lovely, lovely genius. Anyway, let's get to Chanel. Coincidentally, Vivian Westwood was my living Coco Chanel, you know, the love of, that I have for her is the love that I have for Coco as well. Okay, so, <clears throat> hold on, we got here the tissue paper. <coughs> Pardon me, <coughs> I'm still recovering <coughs> from a cold. Not, not Corona, by the way, but, okay. Now, the leather is not the leather you think it, you think it is. It is leather, and yes, it is Chanel leather, but it's a different kind of leather. And actually, there's two of them. I know I'm crazy, but it is leather and it's called uh, Russian leather. In fact, check it out. It's Queer de Russie in Eau de Parfum concentration. I got the 200 mil and the 75 mil. Uh, because, well, they're going to, you know, exponentially grow in price. So I stocked up this one for home, this one for travel. In fact, the big one is batch code 7701. And the little one is batch code 7401. So the little one is a little bit older than the big one. Now, the big one, I'm going to leave it sealed uh, uh, and closed because I don't need it right now. I still have my eau de toilette. And... This one is just, you know, for the archives. I'm going to open it up once it's its turn to get opened up. But I know that by the time I get to this one, the new ones are going to cost way too much. And so that's why I stocked up. But I'm going to open this one with you guys. And we're going to have our first impressions of the Eau de Parfum of Queer de Russie. This is a mid-20s release, believe it or not. I have reviewed this on my channel several times. So go check out my review of it. But I have not reviewed yet the Eau de Parfum. So this is going to be a first impressions of it. I do have here the extrait of Cuit de Russie and the Eau de Toilette. I do have several samples of the Eau de Parfum. It's not like I never smelled it before. Of course, I have throughout the years. I've smelled it several times. Um, but now I've kind of warmed up to it, you know? And I don't know. I'm very nostalgic of, of Chanel's uh, original four exclusive fragrances from the 20s, one being Cuit de Russie, one being Bois des Îles, one being Gardenia, and one being number 22. Mm. So it does come on this, in this little pedestal, like this, and then uh, <clears throat> you take it out, 
and just spray it on. So let's see how this little baby is going to work. Oh my gosh. Listen, it is a soft leather accord. You know, a lot of people are, are, are afraid of Cuit de Russi because like Russian leather sounds like something heavy. And also some people say, oh, Russia, wait, but isn't, doesn't Russia have issues right now with Ukraine? I'm like, wait, hold on a minute. You guys. This perfume was named this way in the 20s. It's not like Chanel is trying to today play some weird games. This is the name of the perfume. It, it's had this name since the 20s. So let's not go into that political realm at all with this one. But I just wish it were a little bit more heavy, hefty. And now I, a lot of people think, oh, it's leather, so it's going to be it's going to be really you know a heavy accord. And in reality, it's not. It's a very soft, delicate rose with a bit of smoke and leather accord, right? Now the twenties version of Cuit de Russi was a little bit more intense. It has mellowed down throughout the years. And in fact, the last iteration of Cuit de Russie that I have in eau de toilette form is the most light of, of all versions of Cuit de Russie that, that you could possibly imagine. The pure perfume, the extrait, in fact, you can see is a little bit darker in color. It has a bit more heft to it, but even the parfum um, doesn't deliver this concept of, of heft that you might think it should have because of the name. Queer de Russie. It sounds like something opulent. When in reality, it's a beautiful, tamed, slightly powdery floral accord with delicate, delicate hints of leather woven in it. It's a very elegant leather fragrance, like nobody else ever made. You know, usually leather goes into the hefty direction. So I'm pleasantly surprised that it's it's not. A cliche of a leather fragrance, even in the Eau de Parfum concentration, I still think it could have been a little bit more hefty in, in the way it smells. But once you get used to once you get used to its once you know that it's going to be more delicate, then you enjoy it, then you love it a lot. Uh, it just takes time to I don't know, just to remember, just to kind of rewire your brain and to think for a perfume person like me, you know, who loves all sorts of fragrances, it always takes that time to switch back into remembering that this leather, it, it's a Chanel leather, okay? It's not, that means that it's going to be elegant, slightly detached, slightly cool, a little bit cold. The aldehydes are there, like in every Chanel fragrance, top notes, always aldehydic. So... It's not going to allow you to just heat up out of no reason. It, it's mental in a way. By mental, I don't mean cuckoo. By mental, I mean it's very calculated. It's very in the head. It, you know, it knows what it's doing. It, it never, it's never out of balance. It never loses its, its composure and posture. It always remains within itself it knows what it's doing you know sometimes leather accords can go a little bit sexual in a in a in a way and kind of losing control of themselves desire not this one this one is like no i'm cool calm and collected even though i know i'm hot as double uh, as h e double hockey sticks as rose nyland would say in the golden girls uh so it's a very calculated and calculative fragrance in the best of ways. And it, it remains soft throughout its entire lifespan on the skin. It's really, really beautiful, extremely elegant leather accord. Now, as first impressions from the Eau de Parfum, I can say the current formula, 7401, uh, interestingly enough, is kind of reining back into the Eau de Toilette realm. So I'm almost thinking, Chanel, you're kind of tricking us a little bit here because you reformulated everything. You reconcentrated everything in 2016 from EDT to EDP because you wanted to make more money because Louis Vuitton just released in 2016 their perfume range and they were all EDPs and, and uh, Dior's Collection Privé, also all EDPs. So Chanel wanted to kind of like be like, hey, why do we still have EDTs for cheaper when all of the other ones that are our competition have EDPs? Now, in the beginning, Cuit de Russie was slightly different. 
in 2016, 17 as an EDP, it was, um, it was sweeter. Now I feel like they're watering it down again, you know, to save money. <laughs> And so the EDP smells closer to the EDT again, which is fine by me because I love the EDT. So I'm really happy that this happened. Uh, but I maybe some people will not be so happy with this. I'm personally super thrilled that, yes, even though we're paying more for an EDP, that it smells again closer to what the EDT used to be. So I'm totally fine with that. I will be, of course, dedicating more intense review. Uh, to this one, I'm going to let it, you know, breathe a little and I'm going to wear it for some time. And then we're going to do a proper in-depth review as well. This was a uh, juicy you know, unboxing and first impressions. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts down below. And until next time, never forget to never give up on love. Bye.